this video, I want to show you how I saved myself two to three thousand dollars on repair cost. On our latest annual of the aircraft, we found that the number two cylinder had low compression. So in this video, we were able to leave the cylinder in place and I will show you how I repaired the exhaust valve to bring back the compression and now the aircraft is flying flawlessly. So let's get started. Okay, here's the fixture that I made uh, to remove the valves. It's basically just a valve, com valve spring compressor. Uh, right here is quarter inch uh, 6061 aluminum plate. Uh, drilled these three holes, which is right off uh, the valve cover. And then these two quarter 20s uh, are drilled and tapped and they push on uh, the face of the retainer and push it down. And we have this 7 8 hole down the middle so we can get uh, the keepers out. Once the keepers are taken out, go ahead and reverse these uh, bolts right here. Take the plate off, take the spring, then the retainer off. Keepers are already out. And then we can go ahead and apply the plastic tube uh, to the valve and secure it so we can get ready to lap it. Okay, we've got uh, our little valve compressor off. Uh, we've removed the retainer, and this does have a, uh, a rotating retainer, so it's supposedly to rotate the valve. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we've got both springs. You have an inner and an outer spring here. Um, and then we do have our keepers right here. So we have everything off. And there you can see that we just have the valve ready to go in uh, and ready to be lapped. We're going to go ahead and put a 3 8 piece of plastic tubing on that and wire tie it. And then we're going to feed that valve in as far in as we can. We're going to go up through the spark plug as best as we can. We're going to go ahead and retract the piston. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pull that rope out. And we're going to go in as far as, in as we can. And we're going to go ahead and uh, put some lapping compound on that and start lapping it. So here we go. Okay, we got the spring, uh, the retainer, and the keepers off of the valve. Went ahead and put this on. Uh, this is just a 3 8 hose. Uh, pushed over the uh, top of the uh, valve stem, and that's just a screwdriver stuck in there. Um, and as you can see right now, I've got the uh, airline <clears throat> that's hooked up into the spark plug hole. But I just used, uh, to put the compound on, I just used this right here. This is nothing more than just a piece of aluminum welding rod. I kind of bent it a little bit, and you can see where um, some of the abrasive uh, that was on the tip. Just put a small glob of that uh, abrasive on there, and be very careful as you feed it up through the, um, the spark plug hole. Then you take, push your valve in until it stops. It will hit and bottom out on this plastic. Also, I have the piston uh, backed up a little bit so you can, not a top dead center, but where you can get this in between the valve and the valve seat. You'll fill it, pull the valve back, and you'll fill this, and then rotate the valve in and out, back and forth, while you have this plastic rod in, and then you'll deposit this, uh, uh, this compound along the inside of the valve. Then we will take the valve, and as you turn this, you can move this back and forth, and back and forth, left and right, in and out, go in, out, against the seat, and you constantly rotate that until you'll feel the grit uh, it'll start out very coarse and then get very fine. What I use is the Permatex valve grinding compound. I like to use this over the old clover leaf because this is a water soluble uh, solution. It starts out as a 220 grit and ends up to almost zero grit. Um, and then you can easily wipe it out just with it. I just take a Q tip, a long Q tip. You can buy them on Amazon, they're six to eight inches long. Just dampen those up. The same thing, go through the 
spark plug hole here, push in on your valve, push it up through, pull back on your valve, and you'll feel that you've contacted the back seat, or the seat on the back side of the valve, and just rotate the valve and clean that off. It might take you a couple of different uh, Q-tips. Then when you're finished with that, go, let's go ahead and now let's just pull this off. Uh, this just presses up onto that, and now we have the valve where it will stop. It will, can't fall down inside, and you can feel, I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm rotating the valve right now against the seat. It feels real smooth. And now let's just do a simple compression check on it. Again, when this all started out, uh, we were down at around 20 to 25 over 80, and easily we could hear the, uh, the leakage coming by the exhaust. Um, so now what we're going to do, if I can get, this is a very chilly day out here in North Carolina, it's uh, rainy and gloomy, um, the whole engine is very cold, we're going to get, you can always notice also down here on the push rod, you will tell if your, seat, your uh, rings aren't seated, and usually they're not when it's this cold, you'll get a little bit of blow-by right down in here. And uh, we did experience that earlier because I keep on checking, you keep lapping back and forth, and you keep checking your compression until you're satisfied with that. So right now, we did some preliminary checks. Um, as long as we can get at least a 50 uh, over 80 in this condition, no spring attached, we're just letting the air pressure push against the seat, and the rings probably aren't seated very well because it's very cold, and we're gonna go ahead and put this, if we can get that, we're gonna go ahead and put this engine together. We're gonna make a run uh, outside, get the engine up to temperature, let everything seat, and then we're going to take another compression check, and we should be uh, 65 to 70 over 80. If we can get that, we have just, just saved ourselves roughly uh, two to $3,000, and the total cost of this whole thing was $5 for that amount of valve grinding compound that'll last you forever, and not too much. Uh, I just happen to have this material in here for the uh, for this gauge uh, and this fixture that I did, and I think it cost me. By the time I went and bought the screws at Lowe's, uh, I think it ended up costing me about five or six dollars for the screws. So, in under twenty dollars, let's throw in a little bit of gas for running around. So twenty to twenty-five dollars. I've just saved this cylinder head will probably get us another 300 hours instead of trying to go another 500 hours with $3,000. So let's just see how we did. Okay, again, we've got 80 and we've got 55. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna go ahead and run it. We're gonna go ahead and run it up, get it hot. We'll do another check. We should be 65, 70 uh, once she gets warmed up. Okay, we took the airplane out, uh, went ahead and got her all warmed up, brought her back in. Our compressions were right where we thought they'd be, 72 over 80. And since then, we've put about two hours of flying time on the aircraft. So now we'll go back, we'll bore scope it one more time, and we'll compare the pictures of before lapping the valve and after lapping the valve. Here's the valve before it has been uh, lapped. You can see the asymmetrical pattern at about the two to three o'clock position. And that is due to the lead deposits that are built up on the valve seat itself. Here's the valve seat and you can see these lead deposits. The black area is where the valve is contacting those lead deposits. And the grayish area is where it is not contacting just because of the buildup on that seat. Just another angle of that same seat. You can see again, all of the buildup of the lead deposits. And that's what's causing the valve not to seat properly. When we lap all that, that will go away and we'll have a good seated valve. Here's the valve after it's been lapped and had many hours of running. You can see that it does have a symmetrical pattern now. And uh, that just shows that the valve is seated 360 degrees. In roughly a day, we were able to save ourselves two to three thousand dollars and not having to replace that cylinder with that low compression. We lapped the valve, we got everything back together, put the hours back on the aircraft, and everything is looking great. We have since uh, the bore scope put about 
four more hours on the aircraft. We're gonna check it again. And we'll continually to check that cylinder and all the cylinders uh, periodically. But we hope you enjoyed this, hope it was educational. Hit that subscribe and like button and we'll see you on the next video.